r slash ask reddit mental hospital workers of reddit what's the craziest thing you've ever seen on the job i did my internship at a state mental hospital about 11 years ago there was a guy there who spoke mostly spanish and was known for exposing himself to various women throughout the campus he wasn't on my caseload but he came to plenty of my groups and was polite to me and well behaved my last day at the hospital he walks up to me and hands me a crumbled brown paper bag and says he got something for me in his broken english i was terrified to look inside knowing his reputation and his violent history but i peeked in and was shocked to see a small pink teddy bear i still have it he shoved the bear down his pants before giving it to you i guarantee it I didn't technically work there, it was a clinical rotation for school, but I have a couple stories. So this paranoid patient, who was relatively pleasant, told us that there was a bat in her room. This was an inpatient facility, patients don't typically go outside, and windows don't open easily. She was brushed off, one day during rounds, she repeats that things are going well, but there's a bat in her room. She caught it, everyone was doubtful. But sure enough, she pulls down her bed sheets and there's a goddamn bat trapped underneath that flies out. Felt real bad that people wrote her off for that. So now I'm very careful with people who claim to have seen or felt things that seem unlikely. I bet that was pretty time consuming. My wife works in a psych ward and she had a lady recently give birth to tea bags after claiming to be pregnant during her stay. She shoved them up there and acted out a whole birth and everything. When that was all said and done. She spent a few days screaming at the nurses and text to give her the baby back. She went to a long term treatment center after that. This was more frustrating than anything. But we had one patient who had a tendency to chew on and then swallow batteries. Now, a lot of our patient group would repeatedly swallow certain risk items that they weren't supposed to have access to, including tweezers and forks. But this patient was a particular concern as they'd repeatedly been taken to A&D over the issue. It was found that the leaking battery acid was starting to really duck up their stomach and could potentially be fatal. So naturally it became an immediate priority to take additional precaution against it happening again. Fortunately, batteries were extremely difficult to find on the ward as all remotes and such were locked away. In addition, they only had arm's length supervised access to items that contained any batteries which had usually been taped inside regardless. However, the patient in question discovered a trick to get around this. This involved going to the toilet, defecating, sorting through their excrement, plucking out the recycled battery, chewing on it, and then swallowing it again to continue to cycle. Once this started happening, the decision was made to lock their bathroom at all times and supervise them whenever they had to use it. So, around that time I was doing my observations on the ward, which basically involved checking in on all of the patients every 5 minutes to make sure they were still alive. The battery swallower was in their room, just sprawled out on their bed with a sheet over their lower half, and reading a book. When I'd open their door they'd smile and nod at me before going back to reading. They'd appeared settled in mood throughout the day, so I wasn't particularly concerned about anything. During one later check, I noticed that they had repositioned themselves so that they were now lying on their side instead of their stomach and facing the door. They also looked a little flustered. I asked them if they were okay and they said they were fine. I didn't have much of a reason to not trust them. Plus I had to check everyone else. So I just took their word for it and moved on. As it neared the end of my hour of doing observations, I opened their door and immediately recoiled from the stench. It was atrocious. Like someone had bombed an open sewer with mustard gas. The patient was still sat on their bed. But now they were quite red in the face and smiling at me with their eyes open wide. Naturally, I immediately asked them what in the name of duck is that smell and more professional wording. They tried to respond to me. But their voice came out muffled and incomprehensible. And as I stood there staring at them I realized that their mouth was full and they were trying to swallow something. It was too late to do anything at that point. But it dawned on me that ever since they had moved onto their side on the bed, they'd been trying to shit onto their hand so that they could swallow the battery. It had obviously taken a while to push it out there, and we later found out that they'd just plucked the entire turd out of themselves and stuffed it into their mouth. The worst bit was speaking to them afterwards and having to take in their breath and seeing their teeth. Ducking awful. Oh. And the battery wasn't even in there. So they'd essentially eaten their own shit for nothing. 
while I was doing clinicals nothing terribly exciting happened, because we were kept in the safest unit, but one of the longer term staff there told us about a girl who was in her room and rubbed holes into both forearms to commit suicide. He had even taken pictures, which were super raunchy though badly lit, but this girl had rubbed the skin and veins in her arm down to the bone. Obviously she died. Bro, that's horrific. That's so sad. I was a rec therapist at a state hospital after college. I worked in what was the aggressive male unit. We had all the murders, child molesters, and aggressive males. On the unit there was a wing that was locked at all times for the patients that needed extra supervision. One guy was actually caught committed to this wing. He would take advantage of the week so he was on a Q15. Which was a visual check every 15 minutes. Once they found him in the bathroom during a check buying pee from another patient for $2. He told the staff that he wanted to gain the power and strength of the other patient. Another guy didn't have an axis eye diagnosis. Only mild mental retardation. But was aggressive at times and really big so the state sent him to the hospital because there was nowhere else for him. He would love cookies and snacks. But did not have money. He figured out that if he went to the actual hospital they would bring him cookies, snacks, and Shasta ginger ale. So he began to swallow things to go to the hospital. If not watched closely, he would pull the clock off the wall and swallow the batteries just to get snacks. After I left the hospital, I read a story in the paper about a patient drinking bleach and dying. So I called an old co-worker and they confirmed that the patient swallowed bleach after a janitor left the utility closet door unlocked. I have so many stories about that place. I miss working there. It was hands down the most fun I ever had at a job. All the patients loved me because I was the guy that would hang out with them and take them out of the hospital on field trips. My friend told me this one. She works at the mental hospital in my country that gets the most challenging teenage patients. They got this 12 year old girl who broke her own thigh bone in her room during the third night. Imagine the willpower with that one. Obviously it became a huge deal because that shouldn't have been able to happen. I once pulled a toothbrush out of a man's ass as he yelled duck my kitten. At the top of his lungs. My grandfather worked at a mental hospital. His favorite story that he used to tell me went something like this. One day I was watching the woods when all of a sudden a huge fellow came running at me. Well I was scared out of my pants since there was no way I could possibly fight this guy off. Just as he came close and I thought it was the end for me. He kept running right past to the bathroom that was behind me. He always got a good laugh out of that one. People being psychotic and even the violent are things you get used to. The extreme incompetence of a large portion of the staff members. And the awesome job the administration did of ignoring it was absolutely shocking. For the most part it was a mess leading to misdiagnosis, understaffing and mistreatment of patients. But some of them seemed outright malicious. One beach of a nurse would constantly escalate situations to the point of restraints and drugs being used in order to get back at patients who insulted her. I feel I should note that there are several who were absolute pros, whose skills I truly admired, but they could only pick up so much slack. My grandma worked at a mental hospital and said she watched a man rip out another man's eyeball. Had a patient who often claimed someone stole his amp, guitars and money from his room. He never had any of the sort. He'd single someone out, often another patient or sometimes us nurses and often start trying to throw punches. He once chased a friend of mine around the nurses station. We caught one patient smothering another with a pillow. I worked in a locked unit for a few months. I've been bitten, scratched, punched, spit on, had my glasses punched off my face and vaginal fluids and vomit thrown on me. The list goes on. But my worst memories are a toss up between a guy staring me dead in the eye and slit his wrist with a big plastic pen, or seeing a girl swallow a rubber glove, ice pack, rocks, used tampon, fesses, and an mp3 player. During my several sojourns into inpatient care when I was in my teens and early 20s, there was one male psych nurse assigned to a ward full of female patients between the ages of 16 and 21. You could remain in the youth or juvenile ward until you were 21 because of reasons I don't remember now. Patient problems ranged from depression and anxiety disorders to violent psychosis. Substance abuse was common. It was well known among the patients that you could get cigarettes, alcohol, a derol, and vicodin from this one nurse in exchange for sexual favors. He was there for years, 
He was reported on occasion, but those reports never led to any disciplinary action because, well, who would you believe? The disturbed young ladies with a history of mental illness, behavioral problems, and substance abuse, or the clean-cut well-loved psychiatric employee with a squeaky clean record, edit to clarify, nurse guy was way more subtle about this than I make it sound. He wasn't handing out pills like Skittles and getting a dozen blowjobs a day, and he was good at picking victims, and also the facility was understaffed and not well run. Oh shit. A question I actually have answers for. All of these are second hand from when my mom worked the front desk. So take that as you will. One guy got into a straight up screaming match with his girlfriend. The soda machine. Like how dare you do this to me. Don't you know how much I've done for you and this family. The whole shebang. One kid. When she worked admissions. Came into her office and ducking trashed IT. Then broke a red pen. Splashed it on himself and on the wall. Can confirm the wall splash. Saw it first hand. And tried to start screaming that she was attacking him. My mom is like the sweetest woman you will ever meet. So the techs were having none of this kid's shit. One time. Some guy walked in from the street carrying a frozen turkey. Mom saw him sit down in the lobby. He sat there for a solid hour and a half. Then got up and left. No clue what was up there. The last one is the only time my mom has ever been creeped out. One evening the cops brought in this teenager. Maybe 15 or so. She had ankle cuffs. Wrist cuffs. And this weird belt that both sets of cuffs were attached to. They brought her in. And basically stood her in the center of the waiting room. While the cops got her paperwork sorted out. This chick just bored holes into my mom's head with her eyes. Freaked mom out enough to the point that she requested to be let off early to get away from this kid. I'm sure if I asked her, I could get some more if anyone is interested. Edit. I got one other, not quite intense story from her. When she moved to the business office originally, their office had windows facing the courtyard where patients would have wrecked time essentially. She liked to keep her blinds open. And one day a patient noticed her. He kept waving at her. And started doing what looked like sprints halfway down the courtyard and back. He waves at her again. And on his last sprint he keeps going. Climbs the wall and takes off across the roof. Mom was like WTF and yelled at her boss that someone just escaped across the roof. Police get called. Guy gets found just casually walking a few blocks away like nothing was wrong lol. Probably too late but I had a patient who cut off his penis scrotum and ate them. Former mental patient here, there was an older lady who was so constipated, she was laid on her back in her bed with her feet in the air screaming about birthing babies while they pulled it out of her. Then she'd go about the hall talking about her new baby boy. I can only imagine what would happen if she had diarrhea or something. Poor lady. My dad worked as an orderly nurse at a VA hospital. He said there was a guy who would sit in a chair right outside of his room in the hallway and laugh periodically. One day my dad asks what he's laughing at and the man looked at him and said, God is telling me jokes. I'm a nursing student who had my psychiatric mental health clinical in a mental health crisis center. In all reality it's not really that crazy. It's mostly Baker acts for people who are severely depressed. Or people who are neglecting themselves due to their mental illness. Mental health units have a lot of negative stigma associated with them being for crazies and whatnot but really they are just sick people trying to get better. Just like any other hospital. Even the patients with schizophrenia or psychosis are usually there because their meds got out of whack and they are being rebalanced. That being said. The most crazy and heartbreaking case I dealt with was an 8 year old child who grew up watching his stepdad abuse his mom, but could not do anything about it so he would internalize his emotions leading to self harm and suicidal ideation that culminated in him stabbing himself through the arm with scissors at school when he was being bullied. Hearing about how he wished he could just end his life at such a young age was absolutely heartbreaking and really put into perspective minimal my problems were compared to this kid who had gone through more in 8 years emotionally than I have in 20. One morning, a new admission needed to give a urine sample. During her assessment she seemed relatively aware of things so nobody thought she'd have difficulty with it. So, I gave her the cup and explained I needed a urine sample. She stared at me blankly. I repeated myself. And when I got no response, I explained I needed to stay in the bathroom to make sure it was a genuine sample. The urine was her own. I turned to give her privacy. The next thing I know, 
I heard the sink running. She was trying to fill the cup with water. I re-explained exactly what I needed from her. She stared blankly. Mind you. I'm trying to put it as simply as possible at this point. I turn back around to give her privacy. Next thing I know. She's naked and in the shower. I re-explain what I need. And after 15 minutes of this. She complied. I left her in the bathroom and delivered the urine sample to the RN. I was then on assignment of watching a male patient, whose room was next to that particular bathroom. I hear the bathroom door open but I don't think anything of it. I start to feel uncomfortable but I can't place why exactly. I happen to turn around to find the female patient from before standing directly behind me, completely naked, staring me down. I avert my eyes and explain she needs to return to the bathroom and put on her clothes. She stares silently, makes an almost unbreakable eye contact with me, and starts rubbing lotion on her breasts. I explain to her again I need her in her bedroom or the bathroom and call for the nurse. The patient goes in her room as the nurse comes over. When the nurse knocks on her door, the patient comes out fully clothed and stated she had no idea what anybody was talking about. Psychotic patients sure are fun. Not an employee but someone who had to be placed into a unit for about 3 months as a teenager. We had some free time scheduled in for a few hours every day. Most of us were just depressed, suicidal or had eating disorders. There was one girl who had been abused as a child and she had been there for a couple years. She was ducking odd. One day there was a lot of screaming from the common room and a bunch of orderlies had to pin her down on the floor. She had bitten off her ducking finger and then went all Mike Tyson and bit a chunk off one of the orderly's ears. I am happy to say that I was moved very shortly after. So I was on surgery when this happened but we had a patient who was known to our hospital for sticking light bulbs up his ass when he got stressed. Lots of psych issues obviously. Any. Go figure. He was back because he'd done it again. So I was familiarizing myself with his case and going through old notes. He's probably had 6 or 7 removals at this point, and every single case report, the surgeon documented the type model of light bulb. I don't know why, but that just amused me beyond belief. Two people tasting each other's poop and pretending they are on a reality TV show like MasterChef and one of them is judge who is tasting and the other is participating. Bro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.